Hi everybody, my name is Paulette and I'm making a video about Link. I am not making a basic usage video about Link. I'm going to assume that you know the bare bones of how the platform works. But this video is intended for people who really want to like Link because they've heard other people talking about how useful it is. But every time they try to use it, they find it frustrating and confusing and the interface is a bit of a, an impediment. I totally understand. I think that Link has some slight frustrations and shortfalls with its interface that are worth persevering through because it can be such an extraordinarily useful tool. And moreover, I think that there are the things that you can change in the settings and ways that you can adapt your usage that basically nullify those disadvantages. So my hope in this video is to show people the way that I have arrived at peace and happiness with Link. <laughs> so hopefully it will be useful to you. The number one thing that I want you to remember about Link is that it is a partially crowdsourced platform and that is very powerful. There's a lot of content and it's it's really rich, but you have to exercise judgment because decisions made by other people are not necessarily correct and not necessarily right for you. So just to give you an example, this window here, hopefully you can see my mouse, this drop down box. That is a filter that determines the level of the lessons that you're shown in your news feed and your, your searches. Um, I discovered quite quickly that people don't always correctly categorize when they import a lesson. So I don't want to miss out on something that I might otherwise enjoy. Um, so I actually show it, I show everything and within, you know, if I click on something and it's too easy, I can tell that within seconds of opening it. So it's not really a problem. And um, it avoids me having to rely on other people having correctly categorized the linguistic difficulty of a source, um, which is actually quite difficult to do even for teachers. So um, the other thing that I wanted to mention up here at the top of your home screen library page, there's this settings option and library topics, you know, Again, it's very tempting to, to just click the things that you're interested in, but if somebody imports a really fascinating news article and doesn't bother to categorize it properly, again, you're missing out because of a, a crowdsourced um, categorization problem. So you can adapt to that situation however you prefer to do it, but just be aware that it is an issue with link and with translations as well, as we'll see in a second. Um, the next thing that I wanted to mention, let's get into an actual article. So this is just, these are things that I was looking at earlier. So this is actually something that I imported to link. Um, Inner French is a podcast that I listen to and, and really like a lot. And I imported the recording. Um, if I were to press this button, you would hear a recording of it. Um, and also the text because Hugo pr provides uh, transcripts for all his podcasts because he's great. And one of the things that I want to show you right away is this is the settings bar for the actual reader interface. And this is really important in my opinion in making it a pleasant thing to use. So just for a second, I'm going to click autoplay text to speech, which I generally have disabled by default. And then if I go back to the main window, as soon as I click on a word, you're going to hear the, the French robot woman pronounce that word. Essay. Essay. Sometimes I have this on, sometimes I have it off. It depends on my mood and if I'm in a public space or not. But it's very important to know how to turn it on or off. So for now, I'm going to leave it off because I think it would be annoying in the video. Um, the next thing that I think is extremely important is I have auto link creation turned off. The reason that I have it turned off is it removes some of the control of which translation is chosen for a particular word. And as I'll show you in a second, not all of the translations that are available within link are of equal quality. So I feel very strongly that auto link creation is not something that you want checked. Um, that is my personal opinion. I also have this checked, um, not a very well described option, paging moves to known, and I will ex I'll show you what that means now. So on this main reader page, anything that's in gold, these are links that I have previously created 
in other reading material that happen to be recurring here. This is one of the strengths of Link. Um, I actually just created this as an example <laughs> when I was practicing for the video. So, um, but say for example that I had created this link in another, you know, in a story I was reading. J'ai passé beaucoup plus de temps. Um, and now here that phrase is once again. Um, so the gold things are links that I've previously created. Anything that's in blue, I have not previously marked as a known word. Um, and the idea with link is that when you see these blue words, they could be new words for you. You can look at what they mean. You can make new links. Um, and then when you know you encounter these words over and over again, over time through reading and context, you will learn them. But especially for intermediate learners, what often happens is you encounter words that you know that you have not yet marked as known. Like I know the word <laughs> psychologie. I know the word fluid. I don't want to have to click on each individual word and click, I know this word. That is really tiresome, especially when there are a lot of them. So what I can do is I can do a quick look. Okay, yes, I know all of these blue words, that's fine. And because I have paging, again, here's the option, paging moves to known, selected as an option. When I click to go to the next page, it automatically, I'm gonna go back, it automatically marks all of those words as words that I know. To me, that is a huge time saver and a real quality of life improvement. Another thing that I want to show you is phrase linking. I think this is one of the most powerful features of link. Um, and it's something that somebody specifically asked about, so I'm gonna show how to do it. Um, obviously you want to learn words, individual words, like it's good to know the word suffisant. It's good to know that that means sufficient, but it's also really important to learn linguistic units, sort of meaning chunks. So I don't want to know just the word suffisant. I also want to make sure that I remember the phrase, c'est pas suffisant. Um, and this is even a more colloquial form of the phrase because he doesn't have the ne form, which is very common in colloquial speech. So in order to make ça pas suffisant a phrase in link, this, the way that I have le fait que, the fact that, I have that marked as a phrase in link. So if I click down here, you'll see that I have a definition for that phrase. Um, and this is how I learn, you know, these little phrases. So I'm going to click on C select with my mouse, then I'm going to hold down my shift button and then click on the last word that I want to be in the phrase. And you see it has created a phrase link. And by default, it has this computer generated definition that happens to be correct. So I'm going to select that. Um, and now I have that as a, a phrase link. And whenever I see that phrase recur in a text in the future, it will be gold. Um, and so I find that to be really, really helpful. And let's try another example. Um, and ah, here's a, another good example of a phrase. And you see when I hover over it, there's even a gray outline that shows that other people think this is a phrase. So I can click on that. And yeah, it says here, a cause de, uh, and I even want to have ça involved because of this is the phrase that I want to have. And this is great. These translations are, are good. They're accurate. And so I could select one of these. Also, if I were to click on any one of these dictionaries, it would pop up um, an external browser window for me to look up, for example, in word reference. I do this a lot when I find a low quality translation. And I happen to see an example of one on the previous page. So I'm going to show you that. Um, the word prof, I think we all know that this university, uh, sorry, pardon me, um, this translation is actually correct. But you'll see that with crowdsourcing, <laughs> this, this definition makes no sense. It's obviously tied to a particular piece of source material that someone was reading. Um, and that's not what we want to be the definition. That's absolutely rubbish. And these you know, 17 other unfortunate souls have been suckered into clicking on this, or more likely they had auto link creation turned on. Um, so that's why I stay away from that. And I, I, I think that link is most valuable for people who are not pure beginners in their language, because you have to have the wherewithal to exercise some kind of judgment. Um, 
The final thing that I wanted to show you that I think improves quality of life with Link, I'm going to open the option window one more time. I always have review links when paging turned off, but I'm going to turn it on for a second just to show you why. When that is turned on, there are two ways to go to the next page. This goes to the next page as normal. If you click this one at the bottom, then it pops up this little flashcard quiz every single time you go to the next page trying to quiz you on the things that were on that page. I don't find their built-in flashcards uh, quiz system to be good at all, so I just don't use it at all. I, I find that my experience is better just reading and seeing words show up repeatedly in context. So use that or don't use it, but at least be aware that it is optional and you can turn it off. Um, I think that is it for this video because it's already 11 minutes and I don't want it to be ages long. Um, I will say that if you go to your home page, importing, this is the button to pull up the import window, importing content that is of personal interest and relevance for you is a hugely, hugely powerful way to use Link. I know Elizabeth imports entire audiobooks and just reads entire books on Link. Um, and you can also browse through the library by topic. You can search for things by author, by newspaper name, by subject, whatever. Um, oh, one final thing that I actually do want to show you. I'll go back to that inner French episode that I was using as an example. If I wanted to listen to this audio independent of the text, I can click on these three dots that are right here at the top of the reader and I can click add to playlist. So I'm just, I added it to my playlist. And then if I go back to the link homepage, there's the playlist tab here. So I could listen to it, it got added to the bottom. So I could listen to it here. Or what I do is I have the link app on my phone. And then when I'm going for a walk or whatever, things that I've previously read, I can listen to. And I find that it really reinforces well. Um, and after having read it, I'm much more likely to be able to comprehend it. So I find it a very powerful reinforcement tool. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful.